Joining us now is Gisela Adisa. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Where are you, where are you calling in from today? Where are you? Where are I'm you actually at? calling in from San Diego. I'm in San Diego currently. We just left LA. We had an amazing sit down uh, at the Amazon Theater, and we're just getting started here in San Diego. So 1776. Your yes. role is John Adams. Yes. Okay. Um, I know it takes some getting used to uh, to hear that a black woman, first generation. American is playing a historically white male figure, but uh, it's in keeping with this re-envisioned concept of um, Diane Paulus and Jeffrey L. Page to basically have bodies and spirits and essences and different perspectives of the type of people who weren't in the room when it happened all those years ago. In fact, I wasn't considered a person when the Declaration of Independence was written. So it takes on new colors, pun intended, to have myself playing John Adams. I actually, this is the very first time in 15 years that I've had the show, ever think I've told anybody this, but when I was in fifth grade in chorus, I played Sam Houston because there weren't, <laughs> there weren't enough kids, I guess, to play roles or maybe the chorus teacher liked my singing voice or whatever. But yeah, I remember, I remember, not. yeah, I re remember wearing like the tweed jacket that you, that was my brother's like first communion jacket. And I remember dressing up and slicking my hair back and trying to sing like, you know, <laughs> Sam Houston <laughs> carrying like, I think a gigantic sign of Texas or something. But I was so delighted to hear about this role. And you're right. I love people that have a new vision, a new ability, a new twist on things. And certainly you are a fine performer. You, you know, the, Thank you. it's not like you just woke up today and all of a sudden, hey, here's a role for you. You have been doing multiple things, you know, great, fantastic work. What is it like, Gisela, when you get to watch yourself on like a Netflix project or you know, and I, not just any project, right? Let's talk about some of the great accolades that have been coming your way this year. First of all, thank you for that. That's just so kind. Um, it's, uh, I was nodding like, because it's kind of like mind blowing. I'm so used to, to theater. I'm so used to stage where you have that immediate gratification of knowing that the audience is along for the ride or maybe they're deep in thought or maybe they find something funny or maybe they find something touching. And with TV and film, you don't know, you have no idea. You just know that they said cut. You maybe don't even know if they liked what you did or not, depending on the size of your role. Like usually I have what they call co-stars, which is just a fancy word for, I've got five lines, maybe under five lines. Um, you don't know until it airs and uh, you see what the amazing artistry of the director, the editor, even the, the digital colorist of the film, the digital film, uh, you don't see it until it airs, if your scene makes the cut. So it's it's often um, like, because you can't post and share about it. Usually you've signed an NDA, so you really can't talk about it. So it's like this Christmas gift that you're waiting to unwrap, but the box might be empty. Uh, and I've actually had that happen once, and um, which is okay. I've I've had more more scenes make it to the cut than end up on the cutting room floor. But it's always mind boggling, and I I often have a hard time watching and hearing myself. That's also ah. something you don't usually have to do yeah, in in theater. Know. Voiceover and commercials and TV filming, you got to cringe. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're right. It, it's it's completely different. The other type of thing too is that when you're doing something on stage, it's all memorization. You you know you somebody might be able to throw you a line, but you know you just have to know all your lines. When you're working in film and television, it's like a little sprint where. Stage theater is like a marathon, right? <laughs> Where yes, yes. in television, it's like, you know, that's... you're going to deliver those few lines and then they're going to maybe switch camera positions or another actor has another line in the ensemble. And then you only have to remember that next nugget, 
right? So do you ever find yourself sometimes like just having that script, those sides near you, like on hand? Like, do you just like grab, when it comes to deliver TV and, and go? Film, yeah. Right? Absolutely. When it comes to TV and film, um, it's, it's kind of funny that you see it as a marathon for theater. It is, but it is also muscle memory after a certain point. Like you try to be present. And if the other actor throws you the ball, you want to be ready if it's at a slightly different angle. But for the most part, there's a lot of muscle memory. So sometimes I find that to be easier because it is the marathon I know. <laughs> ah. um, whereas with TV and film, I'm, I feel like I'm just getting started. I've, I've been really fortunate uh, during the past few years to self tape from the corner of my bedroom and somehow end up on sets on Netflix shows, star shows, Amazon, uh, you know, a film that was at Sundance. And <laughs> every time I try to be as off book as possible for like that one scene or those two scenes, and I'm really proud of it. But with TV and film, it's really different. What they do is they have writers um, usually on, on set. Like right now they don't because there's a strike and that's why uh, nothing can be shot right now because you need the writers on the set in case something's not quite working and they need to reword something or um, they need to like jumble some some uh, expositionary information around to still make the scene work and get the information out. So the writers will often rewrite throughout the day and you'll just be sitting in your little trailer and your little um, honey wagon and just you just hear these little slips of paper slide under the door. And it could be slight variations, but sometimes that's enough to make you kind of your, your theater used to being prepared mind go, ah, you know, um, sometimes they're completely different. Um, I had this, one of my very first co-stars where I'm playing an anchor woman and reading, pretending to read off of a piece of paper, but I should be off book. That's what we call it. Uh, I should be memorized. And it was tiny little word burger, like a long paragraph. And I was so proud. I was like, I'm, I'm going to do great. They're going to want me back and recur. It's going to be great. I waited the whole day. They re they videotaped. They recorded reporter number one, two, three, and I was reporter number four. And we each had our own little um, individual different um, announcement or news that we were presenting. And they kept sliding those papers under and I kept staying on top of it. And I get to the set and I do it. And the director, <laughs> I think his name was Brendan Walsh, and all of his, um, all the other creative team was like, they were like, it's like, this doesn't feel like a good whisper, what's going on? Um, they gave me throughout the whole day, the wrong, uh, the wrong copy, the wrong oh my goodness. reporter number. I was apparently supposed to be reporter number three, and the right. sides I had were for the next door to me. So then I had to tape right then and there and actually read off of it. And they're like, could you think, could you look more? Could you look at the camera? You know, you're an anchor person. I was like, okay, sure. And inside I was like, but I just got this. And it was horrible. And there was battery acid pumping through my veins. But it's a funny story now. Yes. And for me, uh, just I'll, I'll, I'll show you too. So this usually right? Usually I have my notes when I film in my other bigger studio and I have note cards, mm -hmm. but these note cards have my branding on it, right? And then I thought, well, that looks ridiculous that it says the Donna Drake show and the Donna Drake show. So what I did is I have all my notes on you, right? Because I've done my research and I was all excited to talk to you. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to do this without the, without the card. So don't really, but it, it is funny when you get to see behind the scenes of the process, right? Because you have done some amazing things too. Like you had talked about Sundance. So in 2022, um, I love this though. This is uh, the U.S. Grand Jury Prize Dramatic Award winner Nanny, which premiered at Sundance in 22. Uh, it also starred. Uh, you also starred in the award-winning indie film called Shield. I mean, it, it goes on and on. Your accolades are phenomenal. Um, so, Lights Thanks. Out, opposite Dual uh, Hill uh, at the Geffen Playhouse. I mean, it goes on and on. This is so. You're just wonderful. You really are. You're super I'm talented. Like, I so. I appreciate it. I just feel lucky, especially when I was able to do Lights Out with Dulé Hill. Um, most people know him as veteran child actor who um, is still an amazing actor. He plays the father on the new re-envisioned Wonder Years right now. 
and he was in West Wing and Suits. Um, it's such a getting to work with him a couple of times was just just really good for my soul as an artist to sit, to see someone do so well and work so hard and still be a wonderful human being. Um, so yeah, I do feel really lucky that I've had these opportunities, no matter how big or small the role, to be um, associated with them. I just feel really, really grateful. Speaking of roles, small roles, what uh, in school, either in high school or grade school, what role did you play? Did you do Bye Bye Birdie? Mm. Did you do, do you remember? What What did um, you do? Well, in, in grade school, that's kind of fuzzy. I definitely okay. did the school plays. Um, but in high school, I remember doing one show, The Pajama Game. And I had, you know, uh, factory worker number five in the back role. Um, uh, I think because the school I went to was in a, it was a predominantly white institution and my parents were just so busy working, didn't have time to do any extra curriculars. So they weren't on the parents guild, putting, pumping money into the set design and mm. building the sets. They weren't involved. So, and the school I went to was just so far away from where we lived. So uh, I could only really do that one, that one show. Um, and the way it was cast, they, they would never cast me in a lead role because it would just be uh, probably too explosive a reaction because there, there was like a kind of a love interest between uh, one of, I think one of the male characters and one of the females. So that would have been the role that I would have loved to have had, but I was, you know, relegated to the back and I was fine with that. And it was the first time a director said, you should all pay attention to what she's doing. She's just, I was literally just like, well, I'm a factory worker. What would I be doing? Well, I'd be carrying this. Maybe my back hurts. Maybe my, so I just had this uh, natural instinctual um, idea of what I should be doing without being told what to do. And that is a core memory for me where I said, oh, oh, okay. Well, I mean, I can't do this for a living. <laughs> That would be ridiculous. But I feel alive every time I'm on a stage. No, I can't do it. My mom wants me to be a doctor, a lawyer. And I just had that kind of uh, tug and pull the older I got with um, any type of performance. Um, but that is the that is the show that I fondly remember as being kind of like, okay, that was a red flag, mom. You should have known not to uh, continue paying for private school. <laughs> Man, you, 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 you got me a little teary here. Um... So uh, it's uh, wow. Um, I I, woo. <laughs> I grew up in a school. I grew up in high school in St. Louis, Missouri. So I can feel what you mean when certain people get certain opportunities and other children do not get those opportunities. But yet you internally knew what that felt like for you, and you weren't going to give it oh, up. Yes. So that's yes. a beautiful share. I thank you so much for telling us that because that's really amazingly cool. Uh, and I love, though, that he did, you know, give you some accolades. He said, hey, you know, look what she's doing, yeah. you know. Um, it is in those moments, whether we're younger or we're trying to, like, do a school play or we're – it's always, for me and all the people that I've interviewed, it always goes back to that those moments those moments where we either feel a touch on our shoulder or something resonates in our heart or we don't want to leave the stage and they're giving us the hook. You know, we just we got to dance, got to sing, got to got to do something, you know. And uh, I just keep, you know, you're talking about this Broadway show is 1776, you know, and you're touring with this. But it reminds me also of that, uh, you know, if they could see you now, you know, if they could see me now. Right. It just. That's your journey, okay, Donna. Right, right? But do you see what I'm saying? Like, I hope, oh, I, I hope the people that that knew you then are as proud of you as your family is right now, because they have something to celebrate. Oh. You know, truly, you're. Oh, you're, you're gonna just, make me cry now. No, but I, it's it's great that you're doing it. You know, that you're just. Oh, Thank you. You know, and um, I just want right. to say, yeah. make up making you cry. I just want to say. Um, the, the flip side of that othering for us, for you and I, and people like us, um, is sometimes the less room they give you, the more space you've got. Because I decided 
well, I'm, I'm only going to be in this small role. Let me master it and have fun with it. And there are things that I learned that that little high school play that I still take with me now, no matter what role I have. Um, right now, I'm in a role that is perceived as a lead, but I, more than often than not, I am in roles that are um, smaller and supporting. So I just, I think that everything that I that I learned from that being pushed into a corner of the room in a way is that it gave me so much more space to develop so many more skills and I'm grateful for it. Well, it is wonderful to speak with you. And just this last minute we were talking, um, the screen got a little bit blurry. So I don't know if you have angels around I you or something. That. Did you see that? So I don't know. So whatever is going on over there, uh, thank you, Gisela, for being with us today and celebrating life and continued success. And, uh, you know, let's both break some legs, okay? Let's just go out there and, yes. and break a leg. So it's nice to see you. And thank you. Nice. And I'm really glad Charles thank Sherman you. put us together. What a, what a treat he is, you know? Yes. Such a delightful person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take Indeed. care, my friend. Take care. Bye-bye.